Welcome back to the War Report. Uh, this is your show on the Orange. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, uh... let's start over. <laughs> Yeah, this sound like a movie right here. Yup. Well, fuck it. Here go the soundtrack. soundtrack nigga. Bullets of gun smoke. Dipset. Yeah. All right. Welcome back to the War Report. Uh, I'm your host, Cyrus, uh, here with Quan. This is a show where we talk about NXT and AEW and what is now the soon to be the conclusion of the uh, the Wednesday Night Wars. How you feeling about that, Quan? Thank God. I'm not... <laughs> Yeah, for real. <laughs> Yo, it's it's so hard, like, because we have to do this show now. Like, I have to watch both shows in the same night. So yeah. whatever show I watch second, I'm, like, struggling to stay up to finish watching it because I know I'm not going to be able to watch it the next day uh-huh. before we record. So I'm, it's, Tuesday is fine by me. Yeah, I, I, I try to give us enough time because normally, peeling back the curry, we'll record at night, and that would, like, give us ample time to – do stuff like going about our day and then watch the shows uh but like now that these shows are going to be separated i i, I think that's perfect and i i briefly thought oh man now we can record early but <laughs> we still have to uh watch aw on wednesday nights <laughs> yo if you want to well we'll talk about it later but if you want we can yeah. we can you know we can do something uh yeah we, we, we'll talk about scheduling later but uh, how how you been this week? How's everything going? Everything good, man. Everything good. Um, just got the fresh cut. Okay. So I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking. Right. You know. You know how I go. I, I, I'm looking rough. It, it's been. I think it's been three weeks now. Oh <laughs> uh, no! You know, it was crazy when I had, when I had my uh, my dreads. I can I can get away with like not getting a cut for like a month. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. I can't do it no more. I got to go every every two weeks. I try to at least. That's my goal. At least two. But. Whatever, whatever. We got we got more important things to talk about besides my haircut. <laughs> do do we? <laughs> I, I, actually, you know what? We do. We really do. Yeah, yeah. We got shit to talk about. Yeah, uh, yeah. We could go into in the trenches right now. Um, we we talked about it, or just uh, alluded to it a little bit. NXT will be moving to Tuesday nights. Uh, supposedly, that is going to start on April thirteenth, and this is the this is the result or, you know, we're finally seeing what's coming from all those hockey rumors. Uh, I think uh, NBC, I believe, uh, that got the rights to hockey and they're going to be showing it on, uh, on Wednesday nights. Uh, people have been talking about like a schedule confliction and NXT eventually moving since like last November. And now that the news is coming out officially, people are just saying everything but the truth about the matter uh how do you feel uh well we already said how we feel about it i'm glad about it uh finally going to tuesday nights if ratings still matters to anybody we're gonna see a ratings boost hopefully for both these shows um wwe has alluded like or just said many times that ratings don't truly matter to them so uh i'm happy for aew hopefully they can finally crack that uh 900k or uh i don't think they're gonna get a million uh but not ice, uh, not dividing the viewers, uh, so not, not so, okay. So, uh, AEW won the war, they did it, <laughs> they did it. Congrats to Tony Khan. It, he, it, it's so insane because it's just like, <laughs> oh my god, NXT, uh, NXT lost because of hockey when a when when AEW got moved that one time for the NBA, yeah, so and like. God knows that NXT might go back to Wednesday nights once the hockey season's over. I hope not. I hope they stay Tuesday. Honestly, yeah, I do too. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's that's what I would prefer. Yeah. I I actually tried to watch both shows at the same time because I wanted to see the Shaq match live. I I, I like I I was like I need to see it. Yeah, so I had my phone and I had my laptop and I was just like, this is insane. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. I, I remember I tried that one like the first couple of weeks. I was like, yeah, it's too much going on. And I, I was like, if I had two monitors, then like, like it may be, but yeah. having both streams like on one window, I was just like, it's, it's not going to work for me. Yeah. But uh, I normally, I don't really pay attention to this, but I, I do think that 
it, it should be addressed. Uh, Tony Khan winning Booker of the Year for uh, the Wrestling Observer's Booker of the Year award. And kind of crazy to me because I don't know how you can win Booker of the Year and do nothing with the women for two years in a row. Uh, how, do you, how do you win uh booker of the year and then your hottest talent that uh that was hangman page is now doing nothing how do you win booker of the year and you know your world title is now the secondary title besides all that i do think that aew as a promotion in general has you know they got some accolades under their belt for the most part uh Justin sent me something about uh, he sent me what Jim Cornette had to say about it and more or less Jim Cornette basically just said that he needed uh, if it wasn't Booker of the Year and it was Promoter of the Year like that would make much more sense and I would agree with that as well I do have issues with AEW booking but the way they have marketed themselves and you know people just generally love the show so I, I think that would have been uh I think that would have been more appropriate. Um, the oh, thing and, uh, and, and managing to get all the partner deals together. There we go. That's yeah, it. I got to respect that. Um, the thing with the Wrestler Observer Award is that it's based off of the Wrestling Observer's audience, and yeah, if you know anybody willing to pay money, you know, to hear from Dave Meltzer, when you know his relationship with AEW. It's, it's, it's very hard yeah. for me to take these kinds of awards seriously. I mean, it's wrestling. I don't take anything in wrestling very all that seriously. But, I mean, good for Tony, I guess. 20, 2021 was such a weird year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 20, I'm, excuse me, 2020 was such a weird year that, like, I don't... And the, those the first couple of months where I don't even know if you could like you know the first couple of months where they were in Atlanta, yeah. Where I, I whoa, couldn't whoa, tell whoa, you a whoa, thing that happened whoa. on those shows. When there was it, when there was in the barn with the police banging on their door, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you anything that happened on those shows. Like they, there was a good three months where AEW wasn't doing much of anything. And that, yeah, and that was mainly due to COVID. And COVID I would and say a limited roster. Like I, I, I don't know how. Cause like, what is it? Like they did the, uh, you know, they did the fake live crowd thing, you know, by having wrestlers be ringside and stuff at WWE, like did it next. And they had, yeah. uh, you know, like it, how, I don't know how that, like, I do think like, you know, they kind of innovated and like did some things to, you know, spice it up during the COVID era and WWE, like more or less they copied it or, yeah, you know, they, they saw that and it was just like, yeah, like even, even with like the small camera change, yeah, you know, Sure. So, I don't know how that goes into Booker of the Year. Yeah. So I, who would, I, I who, who would you have given it to then? Um, I, you know, sorry for the bias, people. You know, wrestling is all bias. I personally would have given it to uh, Triple H or whoever the hell is booking NXT. I think uh, what they managed to do with Adam Cole, Keith Lee. Uh, Finn Balor, sorry, Karrion Cross, but uh, Finn Balor, the Drake Maverick thing, even though you know people might have like felt some way about it, like, but that was a story that people really cared about, yeah. Um, Santos Escobar, yeah, the Santos Escobar stuff, how they're finally letting him branch out, Cam, uh, Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis, uh, Johnny Gargano, who finally, like, who finally broke out of his like chompa shell, and like, yeah. And you know, Champa as well. Just like they're bra like they broke out of each other, and finally they're doing like some stuff that are actually concrete and substantial. And I would agree. Like, there's some stuff I don't agree uh, agree with. Like, you know, Kushida not being the champion. Uh, what is it, Bronson Reed? Oh, like this week, Bronson Reed, like building all that momentum just to like lose it to Cameron Grimes, who just came back in his first match. Uh, to be fair, though, it was a distraction. And not like he lost, like, straight up clean. But I, I was but a little no, I, yeah. perplexed by that, too. And I was like, I guess. I but, yeah, I, I I, just – and, like, you know, I, we don't have to really get into it, but just the women. Like, I think that 
you know, both shows have their problems, but one show has a plus that the other doesn't, and it's women. Yeah, for sure. And that's, I, I, I just feel like you should lose in, you know, you should lose fairly in that, like, sense. Like, AEW is doing nothing with the women, like, period. <laughs> and they just, they just now are. That's the crazy part. Well, like, they, they just now are, and it's not even perfect. You know, yeah, that's, it, that's it's the wild part. It, it still has it still has problems of the old, and we'll get into it when we talk about uh, the Super Sixteen stuff. Um, but yeah, I I don't necessarily take it seriously. But there was there were some surprising stuff that I saw on the Wrestling Observer thing, like Miro getting like a worse gimmick, and I was just like, I I'm glad people are being honest about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It was very funny to see like worst matches of the year and like the fiend is like you know dominating in that category <laughs> uh i agree as well but um uh, and just uh oh go ahead no i was gonna say um tony khan he did uh he did the uh, aw unrestricted podcast a couple quick notes i'm reading this off of reddit someone okay some quick notes off of it uh what the hell just happened hold on um Let's see. I just saw something. Tony Khan said Jericho and MJF versus Young Bucks will be opening the show. Oh, thank so God. Get that it out might of the be way. some kind of shenanigans. Uh, this is only Tony Khan knows who the sixth man in the ladder match is. Nobody is else he, knows but him. Is he going to let us know? Because they said that he was going to let us know on Twitter. And I was just like, maybe I should delay the I don't, recording. I don't, I like, don't think so. So I don't. I don't Any anyway, whoever that sixth guy is, I don't think they're winning. So. And. <laughs> Tony said that yeah, the, there's going to be a legit, legit uh, big star coming in that Paul White teased that we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, AEW Dark Elevation. This is the news I saw. It said it's going to be a combination of veterans and young stars. That is the reason why so many veterans are being signed. The veterans <laughs> will help the future stars prepare for television. That then what is AEW Dark for? I don't know. What was like? Was that not <laughs> supposed to be Dark's original purpose? Uh, I think Doc, I don't, I honestly don't know. I, like, I, I, I'm going to give the first episode a shot. I'm going to watch it, see what it's about. I, I can't promise I'm going to watch after that, but I'll, I'll give like, it a shot. Like, oh my God, we're going to get all these veterans and stuff to help out these young guys. And it's just like, okay, so you're going to siphon all the old dudes that you have on AEW currently to just work on Elevation to help these guys. Like, that should really be something that they more or less do in the background. You know, yeah. like, being uh being the agents for their match or managing them or stuff like that and preparing them for tv like that's what dark always should have been dark should have dark should have never been oh shit we don't have time for this on the main show so like do it on dark like that that should have never been that yeah, and they still got that third hour come that third hour show coming anyway that they said they were gonna so i i think this will be the third hour Uh, oh no i think they're doing a show aren't they yeah, Elevation's the show. Would oh, it be? It? Okay, I, 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 I hope so. AEW doesn't need a third hour. <laughs> uh, and, and last note, um, Tony said that the death match is going to be the most brutal match in AEW history. Uh, Tony praised Kenny Omega and talked about how valuable he is to AEW. Tony said that the rivalry between Moxley and Kenny will conclude the foreseeable future after Revolution. So this is so it. I'm it, assuming... It I'm assuming continue after in, in like a straight-up one-on-one? I'd hope not. Uh, you, uh, you, where, do you, where do you go from there? <laughs> um, I'm, I gotta. I mean, I gotta. I guess we're, we're gonna get into predictions, but I gotta assume Moxley's gonna take some time off. I don't know yeah. when uh, Renee's due date is, but oh yeah, that that is very true as well. And I'll say this rivalry rivalry is very weird because it, it starts out with the debut. Like we we saw it in the video package last week, where it starts out with the debut where. Uh, Moxley does the Death Rider onto the, uh, the, the casino chips, which is really cool. Um, they do the death match, then they have the regular match. Now they're gonna have a death match again, and then they're gonna finish conclude it with a regular match. Like, w- what is it doing here? <laughs> like that is that is so weird to me. Like you're going to the very extreme, and then you know to the very extreme, and then you're gonna dial it down next time, and like possibly have more stakes it's it's the uh the seth fiend problem we yeah started off in the hell of a cell i don't understand why <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me either but it is what it is yeah so uh and 
to to conclude uh in the trenches we'll be having a nxt takeover on april 8th they announced that they announced that yeah, so it was supposedly spoiled on the WWE Network's like cancellation screen, where oh, uh, where it goes. Oh, like don't go. Oh, yeah, don't go. This is what you're gonna miss. And it's just like <laughs> takeover right there. Uh, there's no name for the takeover. It was just a uh, just a generic takeover logo. So now that's gonna be there. You said April eighth. April eighth. It's a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't know how true uh, true it is. I, I don't know what intern uh, put the, just the placeholder date, but yeah. we'll see what happens there. So we're gonna get that NXT SmackDown Mania Mania Raw NXT Tuesday. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. And, and and that's just on the WWE side without like factoring AEW at the start of that week and then like yep, yeah. insanity that. That's gonna be a two. That's gonna be a two weeks worth of wrestling, and I hope uh, everybody doesn't get burnt out. <laughs> it's gonna be rough. Yeah, that's, that, that's rough. And with that said, we're gonna get into NXT. Let me tell you something. It ain't my fault. The reason why your so-called brotherhood fell apart, it's because of this title. I know how to get Adam Cole out here. Next week, Adam Cole versus Finn Balor for the NXT Championship. NXT this week, I would say we're we're gonna we're gonna keep it short for the most part. I don't think uh, a lot has happened. I don't think this is the most uh, grandiose or the best NXT episode in a while. Like I don't think this is better than last week's. Um, but the women tag team title match: uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax versus Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. How'd you feel about the match? Um, highly anticipated. I enjoyed the match. I thought it looked good. I mean. It's it's very difficult to get a heel versus heel tag team match kind of off. I, I think um, I, I I think they did well with uh, Dakota Kai like struggling to get the tag at first. Like they were like yeah. strictly like playing uh, babyface there. I, I think they did uh, well for the most part playing babyface until Raquel got in. That's yeah. when it started to like get blurry. But continue. And then um, yeah, Dakota is very good at that. That was always been one of her strong suits playing you know from the from the under uh, the underdog position. Um, the ending is it was very very uh main roster but i wasn't mad at it because nxt doesn't do that a lot yeah so it's fine i'm like okay yeah it, <clears throat> excuse me if this happened on raw this would have been like oh again but yeah for nxt this is something that is fairly new and fresh and created some uh you know, some controversy. I guess, I guess that would be the a right buzz, word. A little, a little buzz, a little controversy, which is <laughs> fine. I, I wasn't particularly mad at it. Clearly, they're going, they're going to have either some kind of rematch. I, think I, I, heard, I, I, I would hope so. <laughs> I, heard, I heard mania rumors. If they wanted, they, they could go that route. Not like, you know, them and then Lana. Because Lana and Naomi haven't got their match yet, have they? Uh, I believe they will be getting it at Fastlane, which – most likely they will lose, and then we'll just move on from this program. <laughs> okay. program. I, was, I, I saw some. I don't know if it's, it was a rumor or somebody just said like a four-way tag team women. You know they want to put as many women as they can on the main card. Yeah, y'all guys know how I feel about multi-man tag matches like that, guys. So I'm firmly <laughs> again. Yeah, I'm firmly against that. I would. I would love to straight up one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want. Uh, I really don't want anybody. Uh, muddying the waters in that match like so let's say there is the triple threat right so or like the fatal four-way so you got Nia Jack, Shayna Baszler, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez, Lana and Tamina or Ruby uh, Ruby Riot and uh, Liv Morgan and then on the other side would be like you know Mandy Rose or uh, Dana Brooke I don't want to see that <laughs> that doesn't sound good but you What's know he... they're gonna do they got two nights they got two nights of shows to fill yeah uh 
they got to like <laughs> do something else damn it i swear to like do something else i don't give a fuck i don't because once they add any of the other tag teams it muddies the water like it, it, it's pure and clean right now you add anything else and it's just fucking ruined i don't mm. want anybody to get else to get involved with that in my opinion yeah so what do you think regal's major announcement is he said it's supposed to shake up you know i i am praying that it's i saw people were just like first thing they thought was oh my god nxt women tag team titles no fuck Please. off I, I hope no not. i really hope not <laughs> no I do not want that at all. Like, let the women tag title serve its purpose of floating around on all shows. Let so like let NXT get their run with it. Just let it happen. Like it, it literally hurts. It only hurts the main roster shows because you have Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax just doing whatever the fuck bullshit, and then on SmackDown you just you have these women tag team matches and like nothing's happening around like. They're not even in the orbit of getting those titles again. So, like, an NXT can benefit from having main roster people come on the show. Or, you know, the main roster shows can benefit from spicing up and having the NXT people just show up, like, as a surprise. That's what I'm saying, because NXT women, they got, like, three different women tag teams, three or four already. And Um, they're all great. (laughs) And they're all, yeah, they're all fine. And, yeah, I don't understand why you just can't have Lada and, and... Naomi come down or have a uh, riot squad come down. Like, yeah, like it's, it's, <laughs> it hurts literally like having people come down or just having that one team come up. Yeah. Like it, it, it really doesn't hurt anything. So uh, whatever, I, I hope the major announcement would be um, hopefully like they get to defend it on mania or something, or they'll like, Get a rematch uh, or some. I, I don't know. The last thing I want is new titles to be introduced into the NXT pool right now, especially yeah. when you already have a title that serves that purpose. So, uh, with that being said, uh, tag team, uh, not a tag team match, a big match <laughs> next week. Ew. Adam Cole knows how to get Adam Cole's attention. And he said, if you want to come out, Get, get the title match. I want I want my revenge right now. Nah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so next week we'll be getting Io Shirai, Tony Storm, and Adam Cole versus Finn Balor the rematch on that. And I assume Finn will just get his win back. Yeah. Should be a good match. Uh speaking of uh Finn, Finn Roddy from this week, great match. Um really good. Very good match. Uh, they kind of hold. They kind of hold right. Yeah, it, it it wasn't like NXT Takeover main event level, but it was like for a good TV match. It was really good. It gave him like fifteen minutes. Um, Finn Finn right now is on a different level. Um, this is the best season I've ever seen him. Yeah, the, like this two months, like this the stretch from, I, I guess 31. like December. Yeah, yeah. like uh, since December to now is just he's just been on a crazy run. Like this is. <laughs> I think nobody would disagree that this is way better than his uh, initial uh, NXT run. Like sure. this, this is sh- surely what it, it always should have been. And obviously, NXT is different now. Yeah, much different. Yeah, but this is this is a major change, and th- this is great. Um, I don't. <laughs> I, I say they hold Roddy a little bit because they're just like Adam Cole, get your ass out here, <laughs> like once again. And then Valor is just like, nigga, the fuck. Nigga, you ain't got shit. Like, you don't have anything Adam Cole was interested in. Yeah, he uh, about you. Yeah, but uh, they had a really good match. Um, can't wait to see the match next week and how they move the story forward. And now into quick hits. We already talked about it a little bit already. Bronson Reed versus Cameron Grimes. Uh, Regal does not have a price at all. <laughs> that boy said, go out there and do your damn job. <laughs> he said enough's enough. Yeah. Um, LA, LA night, man. Um, oh yeah. I forgot. To, I forgot to put it, it on. That. It's fine. Cause you know what? He's, he's main roster in nine months. I tweeted it yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> he will be by, by December, by January. My man would be main roster. I, I, I see it. He looks like a guy should be on the main roster. He, shit. He's moved. He's moved. He's really moving. Like one of those guys that like goes up to the main roster and doesn't really do shit. Um, 
I mean, that could happen too. <laughs> like, I, 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 I'm really sorry that I put it. If you're a big fan of Eli Drake or LA Knight, I'm sorry. I just don't like it so far. Like, it's, you know, he comes out there. He, he does the NWA promo, the real old style shit. Like, I get it, but NXT is kind of not the place for that. Or like I don't feel like I don't feel like NXT is truly the place for that because like NXT is the place where like niggas wrestle like motherfuckers like really really wrestle in this bitch. So like you coming out there and talking, mentioning names and stuff, it is just like once you get in that ring, you got to show the people something. Have you seen him wrestle before? Yes, I've seen him wrestle before. It's, I've never seen him. I've only seen like promo from. I've never seen him. he ain't it. And he, him? he he's not like. He's not above a Cameron Grimes who could really talk great. Uh, he's not above a Santos Escobar that could talk really great. Uh, I, I wouldn't say he's better than uh, Dijak when he was there. Mm, okay. I don't think he's better. Uh, well, Pre- Priest used to be really uh, – <laughs> I think nobody would disagree when I said, like, Damian Priest used to be mid, uh, mid in ROH. Yeah, he, he's improved a lot. He is – not he is not on Damian Priest's level, so mm, like okay, you he really like I seen him wrestle before in, in, in Impact and for the I think when they do the the Lucha Underground and Impact show like he can do all these promos he can say like he's like the guy and shit or whatever like his trajectory is really like well in NXT like kind of like similar to a Bobby Roode to me where like he's coming out as like the rich fancy dude, like, you know, custom suits or like, you know, y'all motherfuckers ain't like me, you know, very braggadocious, very uh, old timey. But like when it gets into the ring, it's not all that Bobby okay. Roode did get the NXT championship, but like, I don't see, I don't see that being in his future. <laughs> so uh, LA Knight, it, it is what it is, man. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It, if he's really good in the ring, then I would be behind it. But all the the, the talking stuff, I'm um, whatever. Because you bought it, because you brought up Rob, Bobby Roode, and at that time, I didn't think Bobby Roode would be NXT champion. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> it could happen. It, it, like North North America. Well, this is <laughs> in, in, in a very different NXT. But I don't know. He could be North American champion at some point. But truly, I feel like. He's gonna have to try. Like he's gonna have to impress once he has that first match, and if he doesn't yeah. come correct, then I don't really care until he does. So he could come out there and talk all he wants. That's not gonna move me to support him any more or less. Yeah. Uh, Toothless Timmy is uh trying to get recruited into Imperium, and all I gotta say is, where the hell's Walter? So do you think that? I was thinking this. I don't know because Walter still hasn't been on UK in a few weeks, maybe a month by now. Um, you think they throw uh, Thatcher into Imperium and kind of have him be like the de facto leader while while Walter is not in the states? Uh, I will. I will echo the similar sentiments that Justin said on Twitter. If Walter's not there, miss me. And mm-hmm. that's truly how I feel. <laughs> you can't. You cannot substitute Walter. You yeah. just can't. You can't substitute that presence, that size. To, uh, you know, the uh, what, what, what would be the word? Um, how he dominates in the ring. Like, yeah. I like Timothy Thatcher a lot. He can dominate in the ring. Like we see it in the fight pit all the time. But like, when it's a, like a real one on one match, he doesn't really yeah. win those. So. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody could substitute the presence for Walter. So if they're trying to like recruit uh, Timothy Thatcher as a substitute, that's not going to work. If they're just doing this to buy time, sure, then whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see how long this lasts. Um, Champa seems to already be fed up with it, so we might see a match like uh, custody of Timothy Thatcher <laughs> ladder match on a ladder. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that would be uh, something. Did you see? Um... In the in the background, Alexander Wolf was uh, chatting it up with Killian Dane too. I don't know if you peeped it. Is one one of the backstage promos like you can see yeah, him yeah. in the background. So, um, uh, I, just I don't like Killian Dane. So. I don't either. <laughs> so uh, I'm not I, I'm not a big fan currently. So don't stop wasting your time chatting them up. <laughs> 
Yeah, y'all, y'all, bo- y'all both should have uh, been talking to Timothy Thatcher on some death row shit. Like, just come, come fuck with us, man. <laughs> fuck with us, bro. <laughs> yeah. But uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about on NXT before we move on to AEW? Um, I think Swerve had a good promo. I like that oh. little I, that little SoundCloud beat he had on. But other than that, <laughs> the promo was cool. Uh, I thought Kaden Carter had a really uh, cool promo as well. She'll be facing Zion Lee next week. Um, Get Rob well soon still- to Casey, by the way. Get well soon. Uh, I don't know about all that. Um, <laughs> What is it? Uh, the Rob Stone brand had a match as well. It was whatever. Uh, it kind of just came and went. Um, hey, hey, I got a question for you. Okay. Is is Aaliyah a lifer? Is she gonna be there for life? So let, let's talk. Let's talk about that real quick. So Beth Phoenix said something very funny on commentary, trying to s- draw similarities between uh, Ember Moon and Aaliyah's like career so far where she was just like, you know, they were both on NXT for a really long time, and you see how far their careers have come. A. <laughs> hey. He's trying. Aaliyah, Aaliyah went from not being featured on NXT at all to being constantly featured. Ember Moon was NXT champion. <laughs> she was on the main roster. She had a, she had title matches for the, uh, for the SmackDown Women's title. Let's stop right there. <laughs> Beth Phoenix, I love you. You're wild. <laughs> oh, whoever Aaliyah, whoever Aaliyah. was in her ear telling her to say that, you're bugging. <laughs> Bro, you think about this, right? Aaliyah was there. Like, Aaliyah has been there since they opened up the PC. She was on, uh, what's that? Remember that reality show they had? What was it? Proving uh, tough, Ground? Breaking uh, Ground? Uh, I thought, uh, t- is, is, it, is it not tough enough? Uh, you remember when the, when the network first started, they had this reality show called, like, Breaking Ground. Oh, no. Nah, Proving Ground. It was something like that. And it was like all about the PC. Like she was like one of the new recruits. She's been there since the since the network started. The game is for lifers. <laughs> Shout she, out to Leah, bro. I like her though. I think uh <laughs> I don't think much, man. <laughs> uh I th- I think that I will say I think she is a really good substitute for Chelsea Green to get uh Robert Stone back on the show. Yeah. Uh, I mean uh Rob Stone. It's it's whatever. Uh, I think Jesse Kamea, she's uh, she's like she's really good. Like she did show improvements. Uh, that I feel bad that she's poss- possibly going to be on like the Rob Stone Man for a really long time, and mm-hmm. then like you know she doesn't really get to show any of that growth or progression. But just to be featured on the show, I think that's uh well enough. Yeah, she's been there for a little while too. So yeah, uh, she for was her. there. I be- I think for the first May Young Classic. Yeah, I think she was in the first one. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been there for a little bit. And I'm tell I'm telling you guys, uh, I I speak highly of her because check out her first or like her, uh, I guess her interview or background information on her during the May Young Classic stuff and how she was talking about her wrestling style versus to how she wrestles now, just 100 percent different (laughs) uh but yeah with that being said we're gonna get into aew we're gonna talk about the show revolution predictions and the super 16 tournament that happened i think we should start with the super 16 but uh let's get into it Okay, so for the super, we're gonna start out with the Super 16 because they had a show on BR Live this Sunday, and supposedly there were like people were actually having problems uh, logging into uh, BR Live. I thought it was just me because I had ad block on, but <laughs> they had actual issues. And Tony Khan came out and said, "All right, y'all fuck it up. I'm putting this bitch on YouTube." I thought that was a real gangster move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will say, I will say for Tony Khan, he's, he reacts pretty quickly to things, which yeah. might hurt him in the future. But for now, so far, I, I think it's already hurt him. But like, uh, so, sometimes he does do it to his advantage. <laughs> yeah, which is fine, fine by me. I think that was a good call on his part to put it on YouTube. Um, if if I knew it was on YouTube, I would have closed BR Live immediately because yeah. that the, the website was like really fucking up for me. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I, I missed most of the uh, the tag match because I was just like, 
I'm just trying to open it. It's asking me to make an account. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna turn off ad block. I turn off ad block. It takes the video player takes forever to upload. But uh, I missed a little yeah. bit of the tag match, which I don't think you missed too much. Um, my time bomb seemed to really like it. I, I thought it was fine. Um, I thought Mackie Ito looked great again. Usual um, Josh, uh, Joshi. Yeah, match Joshi, stuff. that's more your style. There's one. There, yeah, there's one really like goofy part where they were like hard selling uh like a little finger poked to the head i thought yeah. really <laughs> corny but i mean i don't know much about joshi wrestling so i don't know if that's like a thing they do but <laughs> uh just uh for some wrestlers yeah it's just uh fun uh yeah like weird stuff uh when i watched the tag match i thought it was i think i'm liking amy sakura way more when she's becoming that like heelish teacher or, or like uh like master or like sensei or whatever shit you uh whatever words you want to use uh i i like when she's in that uh heel mode so hopefully they could bring that over to this uh if she ever comes back to the states hopefully they could bring that over because I, I i think that's a really cool character for her um vanny still cool the, well the tag match was just whatever uh it was cool to see hikaru she to like wrestle it's been a minute yeah it's been a minute so it is what it is but as far as the tournament stuff Ryo Mizunami beats Yuka Sakazaki. I am not happy about this decision at all. I'm not a big fan of Ryo Mizunami, so you know you you should already know how I'm about to feel about this dynamite match. Um, <laughs> it was an okay match. I'm just not a big fan of what uh, Ryo has to bring to the ring. Uh, how'd you feel about it? Um. Honestly, it was so. I watched it so long ago. I don't even remember. I, mean, I don't remember the net. I think I remember it being decent. I don't mind Rio. I would have preferred Yuka Sakazaki to win. I th- I just think she's more entertaining. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 the, that's the yeah, that's gist the, of it. She's yeah, more entertaining. Like if if I were a casual wrestling fan, and I saw Yuka Sakazaki in, in the big puffy pants and big earrings. Like, <laughs> oh, this girl's awesome. Like and she, yeah. she would, like like I said before, she was getting reactions when she was in the states last time. Like people were really were drawn to her. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, uh, imagine the pop she would have got at Dynamite. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but Booker of the Year. Uh, um, Thunder Rosa beat Riho, uh, which was very surprising to me. I didn't see that happening, and I just realized that I did not watch Thunder Rosa versus. Uh, Nyla, Nyla Rose. Rose. I didn't either. I, t- I totally Ooh. forgot. I was like, neither of us was prepared. I didn't see the match. I don't, I don't even know where they I, showed it. I I I I uh I think I think it was on uh Monday, like before uh when they put it on YouTube before uh <laughs> yeah. So sorry sorry know. sorry guys, we didn't see the match. But match. not not uh all I know is Nyla Rose won because she was there on Dynamite and. Uh, and Thunder Rosa wasn't. So if you like the match, I'll probably I'll probably go back and watch it after this. It uh, should be somewhere on the YouTube. But yeah, and then for the match on Dynamite, I would say this is the best that uh, Rio Mizunami has looked. Uh, um, Nyla Rose did a really good work in that match. Like they were really like slugging it out and stuff like that. Like yeah. I, I would I would like to see that a lot more. Very, very good things. match. Very good match. And. When I saw Ryu Mizunami walk through that stage, and I said, "Y'all couldn't get the other women to come." Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, y'all could have, y'all could have put him in the uh, the uh, the Disney Bubble Hotel. Like, I I think it really would have been cool to like have them at Daily's place. Like that would have been really cool. And like you can see now that they had the resources to do it, they just didn't want to spend the money, which is whatever. Got it? Got to got to spend money. Uh, Signing old dudes. I think um I think I think they'll be there. I think they'll get there eventually. I I hope so. Like I I would like to see a lot of these uh a lot of the women in the in the Japanese bracket to be there for Dynamite and please be there at the time when the women's division is booked better so they can yeah. fully utilize those characters. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a really good match. How'd you feel about it? Yeah, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. Um, congrats to Rio. Um, you know, it was it was funny. I like I did like the little uh, after with Rio won and he and uh, Shida got into the ring and they had the little like back and forth little forearm. Yeah, tough, tough guy contest. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> that was fun. 
Um, yeah, uh, Hikaru Shida was like very excited to see Ryu Mizunami win. Uh, yeah. That 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 was cool to see. So it's gonna be Ryu Mizunami versus Hikaru Shida at uh, at Revolution. I think it should be a it should be an okay match. I like if Ryu Mizunami can do what she did in this match again, uh, with Nyla Rose with Hikaru Shida, then I think I'd like the match a lot more, and I would be a true fan of hers. Yeah. I will say, uh, usually Hikaru Shida shows up for her title matches. They usually yeah. pretty good matches. So <laughs> she, she she hasn't been on Dynamite, so she got <laughs> she get she got to she got at least show up for a uh, goddamn Revolution or show out at Revolution. Uh, and now uh, we're gonna get into the show. Shaq, that real, Jay that Cargill real. versus Cody and uh, Red Velvet. It was really good. <laughs> I, I, was, I liked it. <laughs> it was re- it was really good. It was fun. I I I, re- I didn't think Shaq was going to work that much in the match. <laughs> I was genuinely surprised. I was surprised by the Brody Lee tribute. I thought that was really nice of him to do that. Yeah. Um. You could tell. You could clearly. You could tell he was working in the Nightmare Factory with them. Um. Uh, I, don't, I, I hope people didn't see that tweet and thought I was slandering him, but Shaq was really working like an 80s wrestler, like him and Cody. And yeah. I think that Cody's knowledge of, you know, uh, of the past really benefited Shaq in that moment. Because there, we all know there was no way in hell he was going to perform like Pat McAfee. It was like yeah. no way in hell that was gonna happen. So I would I would say that Shaq's in ring psychology was very high on there. <laughs> Just like you know, off that alone, I thought I thought yeah. that was really uh some cool stuff right there. Jade Cargill, she's good. She's great, but all like wrestling in that eighty style as well, but not in the best way where she was like con- like constantly like giving Red Velvet space to breathe, you know, the yeah. in-ring stuff, like getting that, a nitty gritty, that, but that, that shit that takes just experience I, for some, for yeah. if that, if that was her first, ma- I don't know if that was her first match ever, but if no. that was her, if that was her first match, you know, first few matches, I thought she looked pretty good. She looked decent. Yeah. For sure. when, when she was wrestling Red Velvet and they were like really going at it, I thought it was great. But once like she was giving like a lot of time, just like to rest yeah. and i was just like nah like you, you like let sh- like cody and shaq like shaq has to be the one to take time because there's no way he's gonna perform like you two are yeah. you know like you guys are uh smaller and you know Younger, much faster than shaq <laughs> shape. yeah so <laughs> when shaq is tagged out you guys should really be going at it like you know killing it and when, when they were wrestling, I thought it was really great. But when she took time to, like, you know, taunt or, you know, do the heelish stuff, uh, yeah. I was just like, all right, come on. You, you're leaving too much in the air. But that, just a, a slight nitpick for me. But I thought my the match was great. My, own, my only complaint about the match, my only complaint was Cody no sell in the powerbomb. I wish he didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I really wish he didn't do that. I was about to say I was about to say something really green, but I'll just say that I I didn't like that either. Like he, like this, he did the tribute to Brody Lee, and then it was just like, ha ha, I poke. Yeah, a little eye poke, and then a little body slam. He had to like, get a little body slam. Well, it, it is the, the weak ass body slam. But I I, I would at least like the near fall from that. Because yeah. I don't think Shaq actually tried to pin. Cody. I don't think I don't think he went for a yeah. pin attempt at all. Um, and shout out to Shaq for taking a table bump. Yeah, and, se- and sell <laughs> and sell it like he died. Yeah, they they did the stretcher job and everything, bro. Uh, no, no, nobody thought Shaq had a seizure, bro. What's up with that? Right? And, and, then they, and then they had Shaq disappear like the Undertaker, which I don't. They never even like went back to that. <laughs> so I don't know uh, if he, if he'll be back on the show at some point. I'm sure no, he he's will. not gonna. I mean, not, not, <laughs> I he's not gonna so. be like Bad Bunny reoccurring, but I'm sure he'll be on the show and, and you know. Oh yeah, probably because uh, the, the TNT, TNT yeah. Uh, yeah. relationship is he'll always there. there. Uh, so. Yeah, the match was really good. Um, I know I had my gripes about the build and you know how they were doing stuff and just Cody being in obscurity for most of that. But like, if that would have been on the Revolution card, that shit would have been really hype. Like that probably oh, would have been my uh, I, that probably would really been up there. But I tweeted it. it. I said I, that that's a show that needed a full like a, a actual crowd, like a full. If they had like a full yeah arena full, that match would have went crazy. I'm not even gonna hold you, but um, yeah. So. Hey man, You're speaking it's not... of 80s wrestling. Speaking yeah. of 80s wrestling. Kelly <laughs> Blanchard. Blanchard. Hey. 
<laughs> he is older than the Barbie doll. He is older than the first computer. He was born versus <laughs> Brown. <laughs> Brown versus the Board of Education. Oh man. He could have reacted to Malcolm X's death. He could have seen I had a dream live and in person. My man's seen it live on the TV. That's crazy. <laughs> I Yo. like I get it for like I'm I'm like I wouldn't say I'm a wrestling historian. I see, but I've seen as much as I like possibly really can. Like I've never really went back and seen the Four Horsemen's run. Yeah, like the original run, the initial run. Yeah, like yeah. I, I like I would preface and say that. So like, Tully Blanchard wrestling to me isn't going to like it's just not going to hit hard as it is to the historians and the people that were watching or like just people much older than me. Like there's a huge yeah. generational gap. Like let's preface it there. I mean, but, if you had to wrestle in thirty years, yeah. I'm only I'm only thirty years old, like so I, I have been <laughs> in prime. Yeah, I, I I'm a I'm a very I'm much younger than Quan. Let's just uh, <laughs> say it there. Um, so, I would say it was really cool to see him come out with the uh, the NWA tag team belt. Like I thought that was hard because I think that wrestling I think that championship looked hard. Yeah, that was hard. But just talking in the current sense of things. You cannot complain about Elimination Chamber or the Raw roster being filled with guys in their 30s or mid 30s and then go absolutely ape shit for 70, 70, uh, 68, no, 67 year old Tully Blanchard pinning Luchasaurus. I don't even have to look. Lucha, uh, look at Luchasaurus's age, his real age, not his dinosaur, not in dinosaur years. <laughs> like, what? Like, why is it the energy like being kept here? And like, okay, it's not for a title match, but that is still a younger talent laying down for a spectacle. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they 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 back doing yard work out there, but like, let like let's truly keep the same energy, guys. Like, I did think it was fun. Like I thought it was really cool. Like when he did the, uh, <laughs> when he did the slingshot, uh, the slingshot shoeplex to uh, Marco Stein, I thought that was the only person he was going to do it to. That's the yeah. only reason why he was in the match. But uh, like I did think the match was cool. I did think the match uh, was okay. But like outside of that, let's truly like keep. Let's keep it real, guys. Um, I don't. I don't think. Like. FTR could have still won, but I don't think it should have been totally Blanchard to get the pin. Yeah. Um, and then the, the to, finish off, to, to finish off the match, right? The wackiest reveal ever. Who asked for Sean Spears? I forgot all about. I'm gonna, I forgot completely. Forgot about Sean Spears. I had no. Yeah. They, they pulled that mask. I was like, oh, I groaned. I was, I audibly groaned when they when he took his not, mask off. Not even that. Just you know. The, the camera work of who who is that? Is that one of the cameramen? And then Sean Spears is crawling on the floor in his <laughs> AEW hoodie like Solid Snake. And then, you know, like, guys, like, <laughs> he clearly wasn't ready to do his spot because, like, later on, he comes out and actually interferes. Like, the spot wasn't ready. Yeah. So why are you why are you focusing the camera on him as they're setting up the spot in the ring for him to interfere? Yeah, like th this is like the silly things that he like. It, it like I wasn't gonna go up for Sean Spears, but them going, "Who the hell is that?" And he's like crawling, crawling on the floor with his booty up. Like, come on, guys! Like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> I don't know. Man. Do a little ridiculous, and like it being Sean Spears, it's whatever. Uh, I thought it was really cool to see the the four horsemen guys come out together and just like put the fours up. Like, I thought it was cool. Yeah, was I, cool. I, I I know I know people. You know, they had to like, oh, man, I wish Ric Flair was was there and not doing the yeah. shit with Charlotte. But it's just like, it is what it is. I yeah. think I think you should just enjoy it. Like, wrestling stories, you should have just enjoyed it for what it was. I don't think Ric Flair truly wants to talk to uh, Arn Anderson at all anymore when he was just like, I was sick, and that boy never called me. That's I real shit right there. I still want to hear both sides on that one. You know, Ric Flair be, be capping sometimes. Hey. Hey. I mean, he, 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 I'm sure he's right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying. Yeah. Was Ric Flair there for him in his time? Oh, you know what I mean? 
when Arn Anderson was bad, did Ric Flair call? Like, yeah, I, 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 I want I want to hear both sides. I, this, that's yeah. messy, petty shit. Anyway, not my yeah. Business. That's messy, petty I, shit. Just, but like, I'm just you saying, know, <laughs> what, what, whatever both sides is. I don't think they want to like. Yeah, obviously, they can just be like, "Oh yeah, my bad, dog." And you know, they just hug it out. But like, yeah. whatever is going on between them, that's between them. I don't think uh, having a WWE contract or whatever is truly what's like burning them from doing the reunion or whatever. Yeah. They could always just link up on a fucking weekend and be like, "Hey, foes up, man." Yeah, we good. Bro. <laughs> we good. All right, let's get to the quick hits real quick to get these out the way before we do yeah. predictions. Um, Matt Cat Max Caster defeated uh Preston Ten Vance. Um, to get into the ladder match. Um, whatever. I the, you know the, what though? It the was match really existed. It it was really funny. Um, with Matt with that big old envelope with the forty two hundred dollars on it for Jack Evans. That was funny. Just. <laughs> I did, I genuinely laughed at that. This is the, the the exact number, and he, <laughs> he, he made sure that everybody going to see that fucking number on the on the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that shit was funny. Um, really weird main event with a uh, page. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't the the match made sense. It's just that like, why was that the main event? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there because there there was no. There was no way that that match was going to top the women's match or the Shaq match. So yeah. very odd. <laughs> very, very odd. Um, but I don't, I don't even remember who won the match. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> That's how like little I cared about that match. At uh, that Matt, 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 uh, Matt Caster won. No, I'm talking about the, um, the, uh, oh, the oh, main oh. event. I just remember ending the big brawl. They did the uh, the the SmackDown before Royal Rumble brawl. Yeah, but uh, when, but for AEW, that's every week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and last but not least, in the quick segment, um, Jericho and MJF got another their usual fifteen minute uh, promo time on the show, Fe- featuring all your favorite uh, smucks in wrestling, uh, some guy from Barstool, Eric Bischoff, and Conrad Thompson. Um, yeah, it, it was a segment, and it happened. Um, uh, Young Bucks gave a passionate promo about their dad. It was fine. Um, <laughs> eh, whatever. I'll be. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I know we're about to get into the predictions. I don't care about that tag match at all. Oh, That's absolutely probably, not. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm. I'm. I'm really just hoping that MJF and Chris Jericho don't win it. Uh, Jer- Jericho talked about it. it's been a year since I had a championship. Good. <laughs> Good. But let, let, let's let's uh, let's make it three years. You, yeah. you want to get into um the little, the little PC comment that uh what, whichever Jackson it was I forgot. Uh yeah I I guess um people people always talk about oh WWE started it first you knew it. and it was just like uh you're clear you're clearly seeing a shot here where there hasn't been any shots taken on NXT so. and that's also that's also Cat talking about uh W through the first shot because. David, they've been doing the, it for the whole, years. The whole BTE started off as jokes on the WWE. Like literally, that's how it started off. Yeah. With them clowning WWE. Uh the the whole the whole like, oh, they started it first thing. It's really that conversation when somebody talks shit about a celebrity on Twitter and then the celebrity responds and they go, yeah. You're too rich to be interacting with me on Twitter. Yeah. Like uh that KD interaction who to whoever that uh that individual was. Uh <laughs> That, that that's all it is to me. It, yeah. It's silly. Um, it it don't bother me. Okay. Uh, the, the comment it is what it is. There's NXT they know is, they, they know they know their audience. They know their audience. They know yeah. it's, it's it's quote unquote edgy, and they and they like yeah. that. So a- a- edgy with the guitar wine. <laughs> 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 all right, you want to get these predictions real quick? Yeah, let's get into predictions for the Revolution card. All right. Let's we'll see. Well, we know we, uh, Tony Khan said the show going to open with. I'm just reading this off of a CBS website. Um, opening with the AEW tag team title match between the Young Bucks defending against the Inner Circle of Chris Jericho and MJF. Uh, young you, Bucks. I know who you, I know who you want to win. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win? Young Bucks. <laughs> I, I, I still I still think there's money and time to do 
the Young Bucks versus Carl Anderson's and Luke Gallows. Yeah. I think there's way more money in that. And then what, whatever the inner circle is doing in the future, like it, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Um, let's see. Keep it in tag teams. The casino tag team battle Royal. I don't even know who's in it. <laughs> Everybody's uh, in it. I don't care. So I'm just going to throw a, I'm, I'm going to say, I don't even country. know if they're, I don't even know if they're in it or not. That That's i uh, I'm going to say butcher blade. Fuck it. I okay. like them. I, I like bear country. Put it, give it to bear country. I think they just bear on. country. Oh, uh, you don't watch dark. Uh, they, 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 you, you bet your ass. You bet your fucking ass. I don't watch dark. <laughs> they, they, they be on dark a lot. They're pretty good. They're decent. They're decent. They're two okay. big boys. Two big boys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, let's see what we got here. Uh, Adam Page versus Matt Hardy in a big money match. I still don't know what that means, but I got to imagine Hangman winning that match. I can't see Matt winning that match. Yeah, let, 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 let's give it to Hangman Page here. Please. Um, see. I see a lot of shenanigans happening in that match, and that's sure. as far as For my sure. prediction Pri- will go. Private Party getting involved. Dark Order's getting involved. It can be a, a big thing. Um, Miro and Kip Sabian versus Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. I don't care who wins, but um, let's give it to Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. I, I honestly think I think Miro and Kip Sabian need this win more than Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor do. I, I'll say that I want uh, Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor to win because I still want that singles match. And I think if they lose here, Miro will still be like really hot. And they'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat your ass. And that's just how they that's continue fair. it forward. That's fair. Uh, let's see. Oh, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks versus Darby Allen and Sting. So, all right. So, I'm happy we 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 forgot to talk about it on the show, but I think the Sting segment this week completely unnecessary. They should have stopped. The peak of it was last week. They should have left it that. Game was like a video this week. I would have been fine. Telling, no, uh, it was so unnecessary. I'm telling you, there is nothing wrong with Sting's involvement on the show besides it being too constant. Yes, there was no need for him to be on the show this week. Um, they had him get physical for three weeks in a row and do the, uh, you know, do the same thing for kind of like twice in a row. There, there was absolutely no need for him to get physical again on the show. Or he shouldn't, uh, he shouldn't even be on the show. I don't. Yeah. there was no need for him to even be there. They could have played a video package. Yeah, they could have just had Darby Allen like have a match. Yeah, or that too. He had to wrestle. In Lord knows how long. It's it's been like three weeks. So you, do you got a Darby and Sting winning that? Yeah, I'll give it to them. Yeah, I don't, I don't see them losing. Team Taz don't win shit. No way, he big. Um, let's see. A oh, where did that one? AEW Women's Championship: Hikaru Shida versus Ryu Mizunami. Mizunami. Uh, Hikaru Shida. Yeah, I don't, I can't see unless Ryu, unless Ryu moved into America. I don't, <laughs> I don't see. I don't see well, that as well and that's kind of that's kind of my issue with the women eliminator because let's let's say okay well this would have went for anybody on the japanese bracket to be really real um you get your you get your japanese competitor and then that match is more or less a one-off they can't build upon it they can't build upon it if anybody on the u.s bracket was on it because they're on the show every week or they could be on the show every week yeah so that's my issue there so you're gonna have this match with Hikaru Shida and Ryu Mizunami with no story behind it nothing and then there's no true story that can build after it unless like somebody interferes or like truly gets involved in the match or Mm -hmm. unless Ryu Mizunami like stays so this is more or less just a one-off match with no stakes I mean, there's stakes in the championship, but no, whatever. You still win the championship. I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, last two matches, um, face of the revolution ladder match Cody Rhodes, Scorpio Sky, Penta, Lance Archer, Max Caster, and a TDB. Um, as of right now, I don't think it's been announced, but let me double check. But I'm oh, okay, sure. the, uh, it uh, on this it says to uh, so Cody Rhodes, Scorpio Sky, Penta, uh, Pentagon. Lance Archer, Matt Caster, and then like one guy. If you could check Tony Khan's Twitter and see, has he announced it yet? I'm about to check it right now, just in case. Okay, uh, just to buy us some time. I don't see Scorpio Sky winning. I I can see Pentagon Junior winning. Lance Archer, yeah, he's been on quite a crazy run so far. 
Uh, I think he'll have a really good performance in the ladder match. You know, just big dude doing big, uh, big guy things in a ladder match is always great to see. Yeah, you need that. Matt Kasser, uh, I guess you're going to do something. I think Cody, Ro- I think something might, I think Cody Rhodes might no show to sell the injury. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of muddy up the predictions of who's actually going to win if anybody predicted anything like now. If, if I had to guess, I'm going to say Lance Archer. Okay. There, there's nothing on Tony Collins' Twitter. I don't. I didn't see anything. No. Oh Lord! Come on, guy. Why didn't Why didn't y'all just announce it's, it on the it's, show? It's gonna, right? it's gonna be day of. It's gonna be day of. Oh, okay. Before we get to the world championship match, do you have a guess of who the new signee is that uh, Big Show um, teased? Um, I've seen a lot of interesting predictions online. Uh, I saw Kurt Angle. I saw Mick Foley. I think Mick Foley is, would be a really good addition. Uh. He kind of cares, like he he's like very passionate. He's uh, into Kurt, it too. He t- he tweets yeah. about the show a lot, so I know he's a yeah, fan. Yeah, like I, I I think he I think he watches the show way more than Kurt Angle does. So sure. uh, I'll definitely say it's him. But if it's a Hall of Fame person, someone said someone said Christian to me. I'm not sure if Christian signed. I don't know if he had to like if he had the legend deal with him. I wouldn't be mad at that. I don't I, think so. I think it's highly doubtful, but I wouldn't be mad at it. I don't want Christian. Uh, don't want Christian. I, I don't want Christian, and I'm not saying it because I don't like Christian or anything. I'm truly not familiar with his run, but like, I I, I don't want Christian there. <laughs> I love it. Uh, if it is Kurt Angle, I hope they don't make, uh, let him wrestle because that man can barely walk. Yeah. Please. Um, uh, I'm just gonna go with it because I'm not familiar who the hell is in our hall uh, in the WWE Hall of Fame right now. It's not gonna be Trump, so I don't care. Well, they uh, said they said Hall of Fame <laughs> caliber. I don't th- I don't think necessarily meant is putting someone in the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay, but knowing knowing AEW and they said there's gonna be veterans there and stuff. It can uh, Rob Van Dam. Oh can be Rob Van Dam. <laughs> Rob Van Dam is impact bound. He's way too high to be teaching anybody anything. Is, is he an impact? <laughs> Yeah, he's an impact. Oh, okay. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know he was still in there. Okay. Yeah, he was in there recently. I think he had a match with Moose not too long ago. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't watch. I don't really watch Impact like I that. Watch I'm gonna go with Mick Foley because uh, I don't really want to think about this anymore. <laughs> That's fine. Let's get, let's get this over with. Uh, la- last match, AEW World Championship: Kenny Omega versus John Moxley and exploding barbed wire death match. Shout out to um, Onita for doing a little interview. That was cool. I like mm-hmm. that. I like. Did you do John Moxley like that on purpose? What did, what did I say? What did I say? Oh, you did. You did. You did it like Justin Roberts with mean, John Moxley. Oh, no, I, I, would... <laughs> I don't know. I just found that funny. Um, I'm gonna go with Kenny Omega here, like you mentioned earlier. Renee has a due date. Um, no John Moxley on the show this week, which was uh, interesting. I guess he's quarantining after he showed up at Bloodsport. Yeah, uh, probably. I. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go with Kenny Omega. Let's, let's just there was no Kenny that. on the show, is it? Was there either? Mm. Mm. Look, 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 look at them. You know, mm. holding back. <laughs> you know, mm. showing some damn restraint. Uh, because they definitely could have did a brawl between them this week. Yeah, instead you know? of instead of Sting and Team Taz for the, you know the twentieth time in a row. But... <laughs> yeah, they definitely could have been had a spot on the show. But uh, I'm gonna go with Kenny Omega here. Uh, the yeah. story, the story going forward, I don't really know. I. I I don't, I don't know what the story is going to be going forward with either of these competitors. So I'm just going to go with Kenny Omega. Yeah. Um, that's it. You know what? Initially, I wasn't too excited for a revolution. I'm a little more excited for revolution. I think they're going to be some good matches. Um, I'm interested. I'm interested in the street fight, the tag team street fight. I'm interested in the ladder match, the barbed wire match. I'm, ex- I'm interested in, um, uh, a couple, a couple matches on here. I'm not, I'm I'll, I'll say I'm excited for John Moxley and Kenny Omega. Well, excited as I can be. I'm, I, I'm I want to see I'm, where they take it. I want to see how far they're going to take this. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of Bob Wire. I'm more, uh, when it comes to deathmatch, I'm more of a light like tube light individual. Tube. I, like, yeah. I like the light tubes. I think they're more excitedly. Like, you know, when you want to break shit, you know, you just see it yeah. like it's, it's slapsticky. Um, Hikaru Shida versus Ryu Mizunami should be really good. I'm interesting. I'm interested in seeing how how brutal the street fight gets and the ladder match. So there's four matches that I'm uh, interested in. Hopefully they, uh, they all deliver and really come through. 
Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to do that show. Yeah. And that is it for the show. That is our predictions. And next week to talk about, uh, you know, talk about everything AEW Revolution. We'll be having Emilio Sparks from Wrestle Rap on the show. Uh, that should be a really great guest to have. I was on uh, Wrestle Rap not too long ago to talk about AEW's women division, uh, CM Punk's influence on uh, the wrestling business, and you can check that out on their feed. But that should be uh, really fun. And then NXT is going to have a banger of a show next week, so we'll be talking about that as well. Check out everything we got. Uh, on RNC Radio Live, we have a whole bunch of podcasts on there, and on the A Show RNC, you know, we still got the A Show Rewriters Room coming back real soon. Um, you could go see everything they have going on on previous seasons, and you know, they have they do have like timeless episodes. So, if you haven't heard them yet, you can hear them now and truly enjoy what they have to offer. All our other shows are, yeah, you, you'll see. <laughs> we got we got some stuff cooking some stuff's yeah. coming up uh, a lot a lot of stuff is cooking stay tuned um yeah follow follow our uh, a show rnc on twitter uh shout out to dion did a great job with the black history content yes uh, justin justin said it on um the a show but i just want to reiterate he did an amazing job yeah uh shout, shout out to dion did a uh, a lot of amazing stuff for that it got us a a lot of engagements a lot of uh a lot of interactions. Kevin Owens has some stuff to say. Uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing mean. So that's great. <laughs> Just like incorrect, correct. That's all. That's all you needed to say. <laughs> but uh, that is uh, from us, and we'll check you guys out next week. And done. Okay. Uh, how do I stop the recording?